Hey guys, I'm Dov, and today I'm back with more Total War Warhammer 2 online action. Today we're back with the Lizardmen, gonna be taking on the Dwarves. I'm actually uh, playing with Reptile King, who of course has a channel of his own. I'll have a link down in the description for those of you interested. And yeah, we wanted to try out some Lizardmen builds, so this is a anti-Dwarf build specifically, so let's take a look. Gonna be led by the Saurus Old Blood on a cold one. So the reason I like this guy is he's got this item right here that we're going to be taking advantage of, the Horn of Kygor. And so he's going to be using this particular item to give, obviously, himself and everyone around him 25 melee attack, 18% charge bonus, and 8 leadership. In particular, the charge bonus and melee attack, of course, going to be very key here. And he is supporting two units of Horned Ones, so some elite uh, kind of AP. Uh, he's also got Stand Your Ground as well to buff up their melee attack. Or sorry, melee defense, and just in general is going to be good at supporting this uh, kind of uh, mobile dino squad. So the rest of the army, we've got some skink cohort out to the flanks, source warriors through the center. No surprises there. Skink priest, lore of heavens. In particular, the uh, curse of the midnight wind is going to be very key here. It'll help source trade very effectively with uh, other dwarf infantry. We've also got the feral bestilled on, as well as the rev crystal. The feral one is just kind of soak missiles. And obviously the Rev Crystal is to heal. And in the back we've also got two Chameleon Skinks, Vanguard deployed. For the Dwarves, we've got a front line of Dwarf Warriors, a second line of Miners with Blasting Charges, a couple Long Beards with Great Weapons, uh, Thunderers, we've also got some Troll Hammer Torpedoes, three units of Slayers, and a Cannon. So without further ado, let's get the battle underway. You can see first things first, I'm going to be moving up my Skinks. They're going to be doing some firing into the back of the uh, Slayers, trying to get at that cannon crew if possible, but uh, the Slayers themselves obviously are going to be good targets as well for those non-AP missiles. And uh, yeah, so far just uh, chilling back with the Horned Ones and the Sora Soul Blood. Besides the fact that they're, you know, on this reverse slope here, so they're not able to be shot at, they are also hidden in the woods as well. So, uh, you know, sort of double hidden there, if you will. But, uh, yeah, Ungrim Iron Fist is going to be leading the way for the dwarves. I might have failed to mention him. But uh, pretty good pick against the, uh, the Lizardman. Definitely with that anti-large AP can take down some dinos. But we'll see. You can see in the back line the Chameleon Skinks have moved up. These Slayers technically do have a missile block chance. But obviously that only applies from the front. And they are being shot from behind. Thunder is going to turn around and open up shots here. Try and respond uh, to the... Uh, the uh, skinks here. That being said, the chameleon skinks, of course, have a heavy missile resistance, so they're not going to be taking a whole lot of fire from those uh, guns there. Uh, let's see. I believe it's a what 40? Yep, 40% missile resistance. So they do take a little bit of damage, but we're able to do some good damage uh, in return to some of those uh, slayers. Meanwhile, you can see the uh, skinks coming through in the front line, are going to engage with the dwarf warriors and probably get routed off by just a devastating volley of blasting charges. But, uh, yeah, you can see the Troll Hammer Torpedoes starting to unload on the Saurus here. They'll do, it'll do some damage. Obviously, not really meant to shoot in on Saurus, but still, some solid damage done there on the approach. You can see, in general, my infantry is taking some damage, but here comes the, uh, the Horned One Rush. So, the uh, Saurus Old Blood kind of in the back there, as, as he is just slightly slower than these guys. But we're going to go ahead and shoot up through this gap and uh, go ahead and land a bit of a rear charge in this pocket here. And then that Horn of Kygor gets dropped. So they're up to 65 charge bonus, 66 melee attack. And we also buff up their melee defense with the Sandy Ground. And this Dino Squad is now just going to kind of uh, ping pong between some different targets. We landed a nasty rear charge here on the Warriors of Dragonfire Pass. And now came through and are munching on the Thunderers who are just getting... <laughs> Oh man, just getting tossed. And because Horned Ones have such high mass, I'm able to just kind of keep running around and keep impacting different units. And so far, we've been able to pretty much roll up this entire flank. You can see now the Source Warriors pushing through, pushing off the Warriors of Dragonfire Pass, the Miners with Blasting Charges. Meanwhile, in the back line, these Chameleon Skinks are leading the Longbeards on a Wild Goose Chase. Well, it looks like we're actually momentarily caught here. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull them back in just a minute. We're going to lead them on a wild goose chase. So you can see the pocket for the Dawi starting to collapse. A couple more infantry in the front line go down. And I'm kind of using these guys almost more like shock cavalry rather than melee cav. I am kind of uh, kind of pulled them away, you know, brought them back around for another cycle. The uh, missile sponge here, Feral Bastilodon. Not really sure what to call the uh, the fairy one. The feral one. 
I mean, obviously we've got Gary, the Revification Crystal, who's fighting in the front line there. A nice uh, lightning strike. Not, I can't remember the name of the spell at the moment, but uh, uh, your Grand is Thunderbolt, uh, I think that is. Yeah, something like that. But anyway, the uh, the Trollhammer Torpedoes were the one that shut down the Feral with Stildon. So we're going to go ahead and get on top of them with the Cold Ones. Obviously, they can do a lot of damage to the Cold Ones, as, or sorry, the Horned Ones as well. So... Uh, once we get on top of them, though, we should be able to mush them pretty good. You can see the terror is becoming an issue for the Dawi in the front line. Uh, having taken a lot of damage, we've been able to just grind through. Saurus and Skinks pushing through, of course. The Feral Bastilled on terror. Very, very key there. Gary is getting a little bit beat up by Ungrim. Kind of uncomfortable. There's also some Slayers sitting here. And uh, the Cannon Crew is also still, still healthy, uh, having used a bit of its ammo, but has also been tied up in melee quite a bit. At this point, though, the balance power is starting to shift. You can see the uh, Horned One's going to be coming through with another nasty charge here. Of course, Slayers aren't going to be the best targets to charge in on, but uh, we are going to need to deal with them eventually, so better now than never, I guess. And uh, Thunderers are firing in from the low ground there. They had just rallied, so we're going to go ahead and go after them. Don't want to just let them fire. Meanwhile, over here, you can see the, the, the Longbeards, like I said, going on a wild ju goose chase. Um, the Chameleon Skinks still have... AP necessarily. They have okay AP values, but uh, let's see, 3 AP per shot, so they will be able to do a little bit of damage over time, but still, uh, the uh, Dwarf Infantry will be able to eventually wear through all the ammo there, but uh, Units of Slayers starting to get finished off here. Uh, speaking of getting finished off, here's uh, Feral Bastilladon about to get dragged down by Slayers here. Another Uranus Thunderbolt just blows up a few of them as well. Uh, that that uh, Skink Chief, or sorry, sorry, Skink Priest, Lord of Heavens, up to 14 kills, and doing okay, uh, especially the Curse of the Midnight Wind is very, very useful. You can see the source here fighting with good old Gary, Gary's anti-infantry armor piercing, doing very good against the uh, Dwarf Infantry here, with, of course, the source supporting, and the Horned Ones having taken a little bit of damage in the back line, you know, we were able to shut down those Thunders, or sorry, yeah, the Thunders, and all these Slayers were just going to leave to fight the uh, source warriors with shields here while we go try and clean up these units that are fighting the chameleon skinks one of the units of chameleon skinks had used all its ammo so we went ahead and put them in melee they're definitely not going to win this melee but uh, they'll at least be able to hold these long beards and maybe do a little bit of damage to them wear them out a little bit but uh, yeah the horned ones come in here and we're going to go ahead and drop drop the hammer on these uh on these long beards so to speak so we'll grab some cinematics of the dinos rushing forward uh, Horn of Kygor, I believe, off cooldown, but uh, yeah, the uh, the solar sub, unfortunately, a little bit behind once again. I'm just not quite in range to drop that immediately on the charge, but that being said, I mean, Sora's cleaning up a lot of units in the back here, sort of getting cleaned up as well. Let's fast forward a little bit through this uh, late game stage as the Horned Ones get on these long beards, push them off the side. You can see uh, just, yeah, right off the side of the map here, and then we're going to go ahead and make our final charge against the Slayers. Beautiful stuff. We've got some skinks coming into support here. And it looks like Ungrim Iron Fist is going to be moving forward as well. Brutal stuff. Just fells, <laughs> fells a horned one there. Does look like he got uh, getting knocked around a little bit though. So at this point it's only the Slayer King and a few Slayers holding out. So we'll fast forward a little bit through this late game as uh, Ungrim gets chewed on by just tons and tons of Horned Ones. I mean, he will be able to do some damage in return, but make no mistake, Horned Ones with their very heavy weapon strength can do a lot of damage to heroes especially. So, uh, yeah. Thungrim going down, the last Slayer goes down, and it's going to be victory for the Lizardmen. And I have to say, this build ended up working out pretty well. Um, granted, we were fighting on ultra unit sizes, so I don't know if that really affected things too much, but still... At the end of the day, um, I do think that this build would probably work in, on ladder just fine. But uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below if you uh, want to try this build out. And let me know your experiences, your thoughts. I know Reptile King had already told me that he'd used this build um, since we played this game a few days ago. Uh, he had since used this build to pretty good effect against the Dwarves. So... Uh, seems pretty solid overall. The Source Old Blood, you can see, was able to buff up the Horned Ones to just get a ton of kills. Both of them, 152, 129 against the Dwarves. Quite impressive and able to rack up XP Chevrons there. Um, yeah, the Horn of Kygor definitely helping these guys to really, really perform there. And, of course, the melee defense buff as well, not to be underrated, uh, does help them survive a little bit. You can really kind of buff them up to be an elite tier shock cavalry. And 
Thankfully, I was able to keep, you know, the revocation crystals, the charges were pretty much always going into the horned ones to make sure they didn't rampage because because they're such an expensive unit of cavalry, uh, you definitely don't want them rampaging. So anything you can do, uh, you know, using them more like shock cavalry like I was doing there, you know, charging in, then charging onto another uh, unit of infantry, then, you know, just kind of ping-ponging around so I never get tied down by slayers or anything. And, uh, yeah, I was able to do okay. Uh, the Saurus Warriors also did quite well on the front line, 118, 128, and 167. A lot of that coming with the support of the Skink Priest, of course, with that Curse of Midnight Wind. Saurus Warriors will trade very well with the Dwarf Warriors with that Curse of Midnight Wind up. And, of course, the Chameleon Skinks also uh, leading those uh, Longbeards on a Wild Goose Chase, doing some good damage to the Slayers as well. Very, very nice stuff. I like a couple of these guys in this matchup to do exactly that. So, uh, yeah, for Reptile King... This is a dwarf build that he had been having some issues with, so, you know, pretty solid anti lizardman dwarf build. The uh, Trollhammer Torpedoes are very dangerous. Thunderers, Cannon, you've got plenty of Slayers. Uh, some units to deal with Saurus, like these Longbeards as great weapons, so very solid uh, anti lizardman build, but thankfully this, uh, this lizardman build I came up with ended up doing pretty decently, so let me know what you guys think in the comments down below about this build and uh, whether you think it would work or not, or if you tried something similar. Um, just in general, the horny, horny Horned Ones, which I know is a great name, uh, pretty powerful, and I might have to try using this uh, Source Old Blood to buff up the Horned Ones in some other matchups as well, but so far it seems pretty promising. But uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you do like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification button so every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you, all. See you next time.